I watched a clip with Saladino yesterday and he binged about his insulin, his basal blood glucose being lower now than on carnivore. He had a number to confirm that. Now, is that even possible? Um, yes, it is. Because remember, gluc um, fructose isn't, isn't turned into um, uh, glucose. It goes into the liver and gets converted to fat. Fructose doesn't actually raise insulin much. It doesn't. The only where it actually happens is when you take ec, when you take a lot of glucose and fructose together, plus protein and fat. That's when you engage the Randall cycle, and you can actually push up. You can magnify the insulin and blood glucose levels. But if you're actually just having pure fructose or mo mostly fructose in that regard, then you won't raise insulin as much because it's it, it's not very insulin. It doesn't raise insulin much, fructose. It actually will go and get converted into, um, into fat. That's what it gets. That's why we say that fructose actually causes liver fat. So it works differently. It's not like alcohol. Alcohol, pure alcohol, won't raise much insulin or blood glucose. But it will produce fat. Fatty liver comes from alcohol. It uses the same pathway as alcohol. That's why animals use it to fatten up. You know, they use the oleo pathway, polio pathway to actually generate um, fructose some, in many cases to produce more fattening. You know, you know, especially hibernating animals like bears and stuff like that. So it's, you know, so what he's, what he's saying that insulin and all that, Yes, but he's, what he's doing is what he doesn't realize is he's actually increasing. His blood sugars may not be super high or his insulin may not be super high, but basically what he's doing is he's increasing his liver fat and organ fat. So he's increasing his, you know, less his subcutaneous, but more his visceral and organ fat. So so the fat around organs and the fat inside organs is increasing. That's what fructose does. So no, it's not healthy at all. And it is glycating like crap. Now, the old research used to say that it's that um, fructose glycates seven times more than than carbohydrate than glucose. The recent research is saying that if you're engaging the Randall cycle and you've got more circulating sugar for longer periods, the level of glycation can be up to tenfold, ten times more than glucose. So it is quite glycating in that regard. Let's not forget that dementia in the brain is glycation, severe glycation that can't be cleared out. Taurine actually clears out the glycation and refolds the protein structure. So meat gives you that, that clears out and folds that. So that's really important. And choline also helps breaking down um, that stuff. But that's a that's a side issue. It's just I wanted to bring it up as an example that fructose is not good for the brain, is not good for organs. So just because it doesn't produce the same insulin effect that pure glucose does, that's not an argument. It still basically creates liver fat. So, and in combination with some of the other foods that he can do, it can increase the actual Randall cycle activation. Even in a low grade with the excess fat, in, it can actually build up fatty deposits even faster. So, you know, over time, that will become an issue. And it's a very high deuterium food. So we know deuterium does damage the mitochondria. So that is a that is a, an isotope, a stable isotope. You may have not heard it because you're probably new to my channel, but it's an, a, a stable isotope of hydrogen. So you've got hydrogen with, which is pure, you know, your basic hydrogen, which is basically light or what we call light water. So light water has only one, um, a proton in the center and an electron that circulates around 
in whatever super position. Okay. On the other hand, deuterium is heavy water. It's actually double the weight. And basically what it has in, in its nucleus, it has basically a proton, one single proton, but also one neutron. This neutron is the problem. So when you go through the Krebs cycle, which is where you produce water production, you basically will remove your, there's enough enzymes to remove small amounts of deuterium. So foods that are lower in deuterium, so 130 parts per million and lower, your body can actually deplete those. That means remove those extra deuterium um, you know, ions and put in, replace them, swap them over for hydrogen ones. And then you urinate that out. So if you have excess, the level of deuterium in your urine go, it can be from 200, 200 odd, sometimes even less than 200. If somebody's on like a really high ketogenic, high fat, um, uh, you know, like diet from animal foods, like fat, high fat animal foods, then they can have very low deuterium in their urine. But if you're on a very high level, you know, very high level of deuterium um, from those sort of sources, then that's a different thing altogether. So, you know, deuterium can be a big problem and you cannot deplete it. And then it will go into what we call the metabolic water. And then it will go through, try to go through into the protein gradient where you, you know, the electron chain, you've got all these pumps that are pumping in all these protons. Well, they also pump in there a number of neutrons. Those neutrons then, if you have small amounts, I'll go through the ATP synthase, this little motor, which we call complex five, rotates, that actually produces energy. It's called magnesium ATP. So as a phosphate and a magnesium, um, molecule and it actually produces energy, spark of energy. And it's actually rotating there at 9,000 RPM. So when you get a few new neutrons that come through, it slows it down. If you get quite a few, it smashes it and destroys it. That's how you lose mitochondrial efficiency over time. If it continues eating this high deuterium stuff, which tends to be the fructose stuff, tends to be around about 155 parts per million which is what most glucose is and most, you know, most, um, you know, stuff. And if he's on like things like honey or agave or stuff like that, that are, the higher the fructose, the higher the parts per million because it's a growth factor. It's used by, um, so honey, for instance, will even be higher. So he uses honey. It'll be even, pro, you know, some honey can be up to 160 parts per million, even higher than raw sugar. So what if you consume too much of this fructose, then your body doesn't have the ability to remove those, those heavy water ions. So you get in the actual metabolic water that you, your, your Krebs cycle creates, so you can actually run your electron chains for ATP synthase energy. You will have more in that water, less hydrogen ions, but more, you know, or light water. You'll have more heavy water, which has more neutrons. And those neutrons will bust your nanomotors. They will bust your mitochondria and reduce their efficiency. And as you reduce the efficiency of your mitochondria, your cells have less energy to repair themselves, less cells to re less energy means they become senescent. They age faster. And as they age faster, at this quantum biological level of energy production, as they age faster because not enough energy to fix the fix them, they move to senescence, and from senescence they can also move into a, a cancer state. I've discussed that in my cancer videos. If you really want to understand it properly, go and check my cancer videos. I explain it in much greater depth. Anyway, so Salad Boy, um, Saladino has no freaking idea what, what he's doing to his body or talking, just take a look at him. He looks much worse. And his electrolyte issue had more to do with not eating enough protein, getting enough taurine, which regulates your electrolytes. So I used to have the same problems in low carbohydrate state until I started consuming more meat, which normalized it. And then when I took taurine, that really fixed the problem completely. 